like 5000 likes to this video, we will implode more patriotic news. Thank you. Look what Obama planted in Oval Office before leaving. This is criminal. Obama made a show of promising a smooth transition of power after Donald Trump's victory. Obama lied. And while that should come as no great surprise, his deceit has been on display for eight years, after all, the depth of Obama's sinister agenda is nonetheless shocking. In other words, no one expected him to go this far. Former top White House officials are now confirming that Obama planted moles in the White House to sabotage Trump. They say Obama told them to leave a trail of evidence that could possibly lead to Trump's impeachment. Former White House officials are coming forward with claims they were specifically told by Obama to leave a clear trail of evidence for any future government investigations. An intelligence official also confirmed that in Obama's last days in office, Obama was determined to keep the Russia issue out. Coinciding with that revelation was Hillary Clinton's campaign manager confirming that Obama had wiretapped Trump. Trump was right. Both Hillary and Obama are criminals and belong in jail. This is totally unprecedented in the history of America. And we need an unprecedented response. Watch Comey caught in major perjury scandal. Should he be charged? When President Donald Trump fired FBI Director James Comey, it became a cause celebre on the left. Comey makes a poor hero, for he has been lying time and time again. The American Center for Law and Justice, which is currently investigating the apparent collusion between Loretta Lynch, Comey, and the Clinton campaign, reports that when they asked Comey's FBI for records regarding Lynch's private meeting with Bill Clinton, they received the reply, no records responsive to your request were located, via ACLJ. This information makes one suspect that Comey's FBI, which was then receiving a lot of flack from Republicans for being partial to Democrats, may have been trying to suppress the public record about former Attorney General Lynch's meeting with former President Clinton on that Phoenix tarmac. Recently leaked emails also show that reporters with the New York Times and the Washington Post were initially uninterested in covering the Lynch-Clinton meeting. Again, the silence here is quite deafening. Making the ACLJ's information more interesting is that Comey himself testified that A.G. Lynch's request that the FBI's investigation into Hillary Clinton's private email server be called a matter rather and a criminal investigation made him feel uneasy. Congressional Republicans now want to start a second special counsel in order to determine whether or not Lynch's actions amount to an intentional cover-up. Another growing email scandal, this time involving Lynch herself, is further fueling Republican suspicions. On Friday, Cam.com released a string of emails showing that while serving as Attorney General, Lynch used the alias Elizabeth Carlyle to send and receive internal emails. Lynch also may have set up a Twitter account under the alias in order to post pro-Clinton, anti-Trump articles. Such behavior raises numerous questions. After all, it is suspicious that Lynch was using the Carlisle alias around the same time that she was secretly meeting with Bill Clinton. As for Comey, it appears that he could face prosecution for leaking classified material when he sent his memos along to a Columbia Law School professor who then read the memos to a New York Times reporter. This almost certainly breaks several federal laws. From afar, the ACLJ's recently released email Freedom of Information Act FOIA, requests point to multiple layers of obstruction. First, Lynch may have tried to stop Director Comey's investigation from doing untold damage to Hillary Clinton's campaign. Next, Comey's FBI tried to stop a conservative organization from examining a private meeting between Lynch and Clinton, which the FBI almost certainly knew about. Finally, Comey may have told the Senate about Lynch's matter request in order to deflect attention away from the fact that he leaked classified government material to the press. This tangled web of intrigue highlights how secrecy can corrupt the highest levels of power in the American Republic. As a side note to this story, the denial of ACLJ's FOIA request was in keeping with the policies of the Obama administration. The man who promised transparency along with hope and change broke a record by denying a full 77% of all FOIA requests during his time in office.
Amid liberal backlash over vacation, Trump explains the real reason behind New Jersey trip. Much to the chagrin of many liberals, President Donald Trump on Saturday clarified what would be happening on his 17-day New Jersey vacation. In a tweet seemingly directed at those who opposed the president's vacation, Trump claimed that the vacation was not what it seems. Working in Bedminster, NJ, as long-planned construction is being done at the White House, Trump explained in a tweet. This is not a vacation, meetings and calls. CNN on Friday called the president a hypocrite for taking the vacation, and claimed that Trump was not supportive of former President Barack Obama's decisions to take vacations. CNN contributor Dean Obler wrote, Recall that Trump had regularly skewered Barack Obama for taking vacations while he was president, and had even tweeted, quoting from his own book, that if you like your job you don't need a vacation. Don't take vacations, he wrote in Think Like a Billionaire. What's the point? If you're not enjoying your work, you're in the wrong job. Obla continued, while Trump is clearly not deserving of a 17-day vacation only six months into his new job, we, the people, desperately need one. Typically presidents, like Lincoln, will visibly age while in office, he wrote. In this case, Trump is doing a reverse Lincoln, he is aging all of us. That is, all of us who are responsible for his dismal 33% approval rating. Others including late-night show host Stephen Colbert, who infamously went on a vulgar, expletive-laden rant against the president in May, sarcastically said that the president earned his vacation. He's earned it. Is a phrase that you don't say about Donald Trump, Colbert said during the Friday airing of his CBS show. Comedian Chelsea Handler tweeted on Friday about the president's vacation and said, Trump is leaving for vacation. Let's hope it's like that vacation that Bill O'Reilly went. U.S. Senate candidate pulls out gun at GOP meeting to prove he is pro Second Amendment. Senate candidate Joy Moore, R.L., pulled a gun out of his wife's purse during a Chambers County Republican Club meeting in order to show that he is pro Second Amendment. Roll Call reports that Moore was at the club on Thursday responding to a constituent's question as to whether he supported the Second Amendment. Moore responded by saying, We carry, and pulling a handgun out of his wife's purse. The gun was a snub nose revolver that appeared to be made of lightweight materials for concealed carry. Moore then handed the gun back to his wife so she could tuck it back into her purse. He later said, I will uphold the Second Amendment. The 70 year old Moore is a former Alabama Supreme Court justice. He is vying for a Senate seat currently held by Republican Luther Strange. Rep. Mo Brooks, R. Al, is trying to win Strange's seat as well, which makes the primary election extremely important. All three men claim to be pro Second Amendment and Rep. Brooks has released a number of ads focused on his pro gun stand. Malia Obama dances widely at Lollapalooza in Chicago during the killers. With classes at Harvard starting in just a few short weeks, Malia Obama is making sure to end her gap year in style. The former first daughter was caught on video letting her hair down and dancing up a storm while the killers performed at the Lollapalooza Music Festival in Chicago. Video obtained by TMZ shows Malia and a gal pal dancing wildly as the Las Vegas rock band played its hits during the headlining set on Friday night. This isn't the first time Malia has been spotted enjoying herself while out in public with her friends. The 19-year-old was videotaped last year at the festival twerking and grinding while listening to rapper Bryson Tiller. Malia's friend throws herself to the ground while Obama's daughter jokingly pretends to play the drums matching her moves with the music. She then helps her friend up before they turn to watch the rest of the show, but the party was far from over. Footage later captured Malia taking her turn to writhe and roll on the grass, thrashing around before headbanging and pounding the ground during a guitar riff. Malia and her friends reportedly spent most of their time backstage during the killer's set, before going to the grassy area to dance. This isn't the first time Malia's moves at Lollapalooza have landed her in the headlines. Last year a video popped up of Malia twerking with friends during a performance at the festival. 
The high school graduate was criticized for skipping Hillary Clinton's historic speech at the Democratic National Convention to attend the event in her hometown. Another video allegedly showed Obama's eldest puffing on a suspicious cigarette during the festival. The brief clip, published by Radar, shows the teenager mingling with crowds as she takes a drag. An eyewitness insisted she was smoking marijuana, the tabloid site reported. Shock Here's what McCain told Democrats after he saved Obamacare. It's no secret that Senator John McCain has been on the anti-Trump bandwagon lately, but the statement he made after voting down Obamacare reform shocked everyone. Pro-Trump activist Jack Bozabeek tweeted Saturday, multiple Hill staffers confirmed last night McCain was heard laughing with teams and remarked, let's see Donald make America great again now. McCain seemed to have this jovial conversation with several Democrats after delivering his final blow of denouncing the repeal once and for all despite last-ditch efforts by House Speaker Paul Ryan and President Trump to make him see reason. Stunned gasps and some applause echoed throughout the chamber as Senator McCain voted no with a downward hand gesture. He told reporters afterwards that he thought it was the right vote. I do my job as a senator. The vote comes as no surprise to some as he has signaled his negative views of repealing Obamacare many times. Apparently, his mind was already made up. He even told reporters as he strutted into Senate chambers that morning, watch the show. He stated to several Democrats within the chambers, let's get this over with. He also remarked prior to Friday morning, I am convinced that we can move forward but we have to have assurances that we will go through a normal process. Right now, that is not the case. And we do not have the assurances. He stated, we can't make the same mistake we made in 2009. We've got to have Republicans and Democrats together. McCain has now become sort of a spokesperson and a hero to those who were adamantly opposed to the bill. Senator Chris Coons said, I was trying not to jump up and down and smile sharing the enthusiasm of many Democrats who were ecstatic to see Obama's original Health Care Reform Act stay in place. But some were still unsure where he stood until the final vote. Senator Bill Cassidy stated that he thought he was a yes and had been told he was a yes when I came to the floor. He said he that when he found out there were issues, he thought they might be resolved. And then they were not. And Cassidy is not alone. Other Republicans expressed their disappointment as well. Senator Richard Burr said, disappointed. I never comment on the way people vote. But I'm disappointed that we don't have an opportunity. Senator Richard Shelby shared his sentiments, well, we had 49 people and had three that didn't come through. Tough night. President Trump's final thoughts were tweeted out later in the day, three Republicans and 48 Democrats let the American people down. As I said from the beginning, let Obamacare implode then deal. Watch. In the end, McCain seemed to have concede, making the statement that I've stated time and time again that one of the major failures of Obamacare was that it was rammed through Congress by Democrats on a strict party line basis without a single Republican vote. We should not make the mistakes of the past that has led to Obamacare's collapse, including in my home state of Arizona where premiums are skyrocketing and health care providers are fleeing the marketplace.